Hey everyone. So I'd like to go over a few problems from the final review activity and this will be the first of two videos. So in this, this first problem I'd like to go over is problem 13. And in this problem it says that Justin is trying to decide between two plumber companies to fix his sink. And the first company charges $50 for a service call. In other words, there's this $50 fee that they have to pay just to get service. And then there's this additional $36 per hour of labor from this first company. And then there's a second company that, that Justin's considering. And, and their initial fee is quite a bit less, $35. Whereas uh, how much they're charging per hour, it's a little bit more, not by much, but, but just a bit, $39 per hour. And so the first question this, this problem asks is, after how many hours do the companies charge the same amount? Right. And, and, and because we've got this uh, fixed amount, that fixed cost per hour, it's not changing, this rate of change is not changing, the rate of change of, of the, the fee per hour is not changing. Uh, we can rep represent both of these uh, bills, essentially, with a linear equation. And so maybe let me say that, that let's say C, let that represent the, the cost for the service for, for fixing the sink. And let's say T is the, the number of hours. That we expect this, this uh, plumber to work. Well, so we, we saw before that, that when we have an equation of the form, uh, Y is equal to MX plus B, and this was you know, meant to represent a, a word problem, really, the slope was a rate of change. And this B was some sort of initial amount or fixed cost. And so we see in these problems here that, that uh, we have almost the same thing, uh, but instead I'm gonna say that C, right, my, my dependent variable, the cost is dependent on the number of hours this plumber works, uh, C is equal to the rate of change times the independent variable T plus this fixed amount, $50. Whereas for the second, uh, the second plumbing service, the, the cost is going to be well, the rate of change dollars per hour, $39 for each hour T plus this fixed amount of $35. And so we can see that, that as we spend more time uh, using a second service, uh, you know, if we spend a significant amount of time, um, the $3 per hour will eventually add up and surpass the, 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 the difference in the initial fees. But if you're gonna, if, if Justin's gonna use the service for a small amount of time, doesn't expect this thing to take very long to, to fix, then then maybe the second service is better. But let's figure out exactly how much time it'll take. So here, um, I mean, one way we can think about what's going on is that, is that really there's sort of a graph going on here in the background where this axis is the, you know, like the x-axis, like the independent variable axis, it's, it's the axis for t time. This vertical axis is the, the axis for the cost. And, and really, uh, there's, there's a, a line or a graph of, of this equation, of each equation. One that looks maybe like this, and I'm just drawing a rough sketch. And then there's another one for the, the green, uh, for the second plumbing service. 
And the idea is that this point of intersection, this is the point where uh, the t value and the, and the value of t and c are, are the same for, for both equations. This is really telling us this point here. This is when the companies charge the same amount. Right, the point of intersection, if each point represents you know, how much the company is charging at that time, then where they overlap is, is where they both are going to charge the same amount at that same time. And so what we can do here is we can, if we want to find when they, the companies charge the same amount, we can try and find this point. And this point is found, this point is, is really a solution. It's the solution to the system of equations. Where our system is given by these two equations. Okay, well, we've learned how to solve system of equations. We, we can either use substitution or elimination. Well, here I know that C in the second equation is really equivalent to 39 times T plus 35. And so in this other equation, when I see that variable C, I can replace it with something that C represents, 39T plus 35. Right, so here we've got that 39t plus 35 is equal to 36t plus 50. Right, where, where here, this, this thing in green, this is just another way of writing that variable c based on our second equation, right? c is equal to 39t plus 35. And so now we can solve this equation in one variable for t. One way we can do that is we can just try and get t by itself. So I'm going to subtract away 36t from both sides. And this gives us that 3t plus 35 is equal to 50. And so subtracting away 35 from both sides, we get that 3t is equal to 15. And then dividing both sides by 3, we get t is equal to 5. And so what does this mean? This means that uh, at 5 hours of service, the company is charged the same amount. Okay, and actually that's all the problem asks for. So normally when we solve a system of equations, we want to find uh, the value for both variables. And here we only found the value of the variable t. Uh, normally we would take that value, plug it back into one of the equations and get the value of, of the variable c, you know, what the cost is after five hours. But, but this problem only asks us at how many hours does the company or do the companies charge the same amount? And, and we figured that out, we've addressed the question. And so this is a perfectly fine stopping place for this particular problem. Okay, uh, the next problem says, how much time would it take for the plumber, for a plumber from the first company to work on a sink if the bill came out to be $100? Well, the equation telling us the cost of, of service from the first company is, is C is equal to, uh, let me double check here, so 36T plus 50. So we're asking how long is this, this plumber going to spend working on this sink if the total bill came out to be $100? Well, I can replace my cost with what, I, what I'm expecting it to be, $100. And I can solve this equation for the time, the unknown, the unknown quantity. So here we've got 100 is equal to 36t plus 50. 
and so subtracting both sides by 50, we get 50 is equal to 36t, and then we'd have to get that variable t alone and divide both sides by 36. And so at the end of the day, this is t is equal to, and so it's, you know, it's more than one hour. Um, can we reduce this anymore? Well, we can divide the top and the bottom by two, giving us 25 over 18. Um, though this doesn't really tell us uh, anything much more clear. Uh, we know it's you know a little bit more than an hour, uh, not quite an hour and a half. But but we could run this through a calculator and and, and get a, a clearer uh, quantity. But but this is enough. This this tells us how long uh, the plumber will work. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's talk about 22, 22C. So in problem 22, we're asked to solve the inequality, we're asked to, to graph this inequality on a number line, and we're asked to write the interval notation for this inequality, uh, for the solutions of this inequality. And so here, the inequality given for 22C is 4 plus 2 times a plus 5 is less than or equal to 2 times negative a minus 4. And so the, the big idea with solving inequalities is that we can just about do exactly what we did uh, when it came to solving equations in one variable, linear equations in one variable. Um, you know, we could simplify, we could add like terms to both, or we could add and subtract the same amount from both sides, uh, multiply the same quantity to both sides, divide the same quantity to both sides. But, but the, the thing you gotta be careful about when you uh, solved inequalities is that when you multiplied or divided, by a negative number, we'll have to reverse the inequality sign. And so let's keep that in mind while we're going through this. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute the two. And I'm gonna simplify both sides of this equation. We got four plus two a plus 10 is less than or equal to two, I guess it's negative two a minus eight. Okay, so here, uh, this 4 and this 10 would combine to a 14. And so I'm going to take away 14 from both sides. And this gives us 2a is less than or equal to negative 2a. And then what's negative 8 plus 14, or no, negative 8 minus 14? Uh, well, that, that brings us to negative 22, right? If I owe $8, I owe 14 more. Together, I owe $22. And the next thing I would do is I want to get all my copies of A on the other side. I'm solving this linear inequality and I get 4A is less than or equal to negative 22. We're going to divide them both sides by 4 now. Right, that's what we would do when, uh, when we solve equations to get that a variable alone, and we get a is less than or equal to, well, negative 22, uh, four doesn't go into negative 22 so cleanly, but it does reduce by a factor of two. And so this becomes a negative 11 over two. And so notice that, that you know, I, I kept this inequality symbol the same throughout this uh, solving the inequality. Um, I didn't write an equal sign. I know we're treating things like an equation, but 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 really uh, to to make sure the statement still agrees with what we wrote before in the previous line, we we have to keep that inequality symbol unless we multiply or divide by a negative number. And in this case, we didn't. Right. Okay, so that's the solution to this more complicated looking inequality. Any number that's less than or equal to negative eleven over two will make this inequality true. Uh, and so I can graph a, I can sketch a graph of the solutions here. Right? So here at the, the center of the, the of, every, of what's going on is, is negative 11 over two. Actually, maybe let me be a little more precise. Um, 
So maybe let's say, so what is 11 over two? That's, that's roughly 5.5, so negative 5.5. So I have negative five here, negative six here. Then the point that I am uh, sort of acts as the boundary of all of our solutions to the equation or to the inequality is this, this point right between negative five and negative six. This is uh, negative 11 over two. Okay, and so we're looking at all of the numbers that are less than or equal to this negative 11 or over two. That's all the numbers on the left side of this inequality, or this, this point here. And then in interval notation, well, we're saying that, that negative 11 over two is as large as A can be. And it's allowed to be negative 11 over two, but it can be any number smaller, so down to negative infinity. And so here the order doesn't matter in which we write these things. Negative infinity should be on the left. When we look at this, this interval notation, uh, really this should be the smaller quantity. And this should be the larger quantity, the larger boundary. But that's the interval notation for this, this inequality and, and the solution set. Okay, let's go over 23, uh, 23a. So problem 23 uh, really just digs into polynomials, multiplying, adding polynomials, and, and then also using exponent rules. So here we've got eight a squared b multiplied with negative five a cubed b to the fifth. And so notice that, that here this eight is being multiplied with a squared multiplied with b, uh, negative five is being multiplied with a cubed multiplied with b to the fifth, and then we're multiplying these groups together. So even though there's this, this, this negative sign, this minus sign here, and that's just telling us the sign of, of the group that we're multiplying with. It's not subtraction at, at all. Uh, and, and so here we just have to multiply everything together. And, and right, order of multiplication doesn't matter. So I can rearrange these terms as I please. And, and, and imagine this as, maybe I'll just write this once, a times negative five times a squared times a cubed times b times b to the fifth. And you wouldn't, I wouldn't normally expect you to write this all out in this way, but maybe uh, just for the first time in this, this uh, review video, uh, I'll, I'll do it like this, just so that we can really see everything very laid out. So eight times negative five is, it's negative 40. How many A's are we multiplying? Well, there's two here and three here, giving us a total product of five A's, right? Exponents are counting multiplication and and here, so that it's telling us that there's two being multiplied, three being multiplied, and we're multiplying them together. So there's five being multiplied. And then we have b to the six, right? One b multiplied with five b's is six b's being multiplied. Right, 23b. So we've got four p plus nine t multiplied with two p minus five t. And so again, we have a multiplication problem here. We're multiplying two groups, uh, sum and a difference. Um, but, but again, you know, it's not the parentheses telling us that there's multiplication happening. It's the fact that there's no operation between these parentheses. That's telling us multiplication. And so how do we multiply two polynomials? Well, we multiply every term in the first polynomial with every term in the second. So just to make sure I, I don't miss anything, I'm gonna take this 4p and make sure that it gets multiplied with everything in the second polynomial. And then I'm gonna take this next term and make sure that that also gets multiplied with everything in the second polynomial. So we get uh, well, 4p times 2p is 8p squared, right? p times p is p squared. Uh, minus four times 
4p times negative 5t is negative 20pt. Then we've got plus 18pt minus 45t squared. And so these two terms in the middle are, are like terms in this case, and we get 8p squared minus 2pt minus 45t squared. Okay, and so let's let's compare this with with two or twenty three d. So twenty three d looks very similar. But what we're doing here is we're not multiplying, right? We've got this operation between these two polynomials. Uh, the operation is subtraction. We're subtracting the the terms in these two polynomials. So really, this is this is the same as 4x squared minus x, but then I'm going to subtract away each term. Okay, so we're subtracting away 2x, and then subtracting away negative 7 is the same as adding 7. Right, so there wasn't any multiplication that happened here. You might be able to interpret uh, the subtraction as multiplying by a negative sign across my second polynomial, but but really, I just want to emphasize that there's no multiplication in this, in this expression. We're not multiplying any of the terms together. So once we are, are aware that we're, we're dealing with subtraction here, and subtracting with the second polynomial, now we just have to combine like terms. And, and there's not too many to combine, really. Uh, only, the again, the two terms in the middle here. So we have 4x squared minus 3x, right? Minus 1x, minus 2x, I owe $1, I owe $2, really I owe $3. 4x squared minus 3x plus 7. Okay, what about part E? So E says we've got 3x to the 6 multiplied with 5x to the 4th squared. Order of operations tells us that we ought to deal with this uh, this exponent first, this power of two. And when we take a group raised to a power, we'll, when we take a product, right, right, five times x to the fourth to that power of two, well, that's the same as taking five to the power of two. In other words, 25. And then the other factor in the product, x to the fourth to the power of two, that's x to the fourth times x to the fourth, it's x to the eighth, right, x to the four times two. Okay, well now we multiply these two, uh, these two quantities just like we did earlier, and, and we get 75, right, three times 25, and then x to the sixth times x to the eighth. How many x's are being multiplied? Well, there's, oops, sorry about that. There's six being multiplied here, eight being multiplied here, so, so there's 14 in total being multiplied if we're gonna multiply the six and the eight together. The six sets of x and the eight sets of x together. Uh, there's 14 x's being multiplied. Okay, let's do part F. Part F says we've got this fraction here, 3x to the fifth, and we've divided it by 4x squared, and then we're going to cube this. So whenever we're dealing with a fraction and there's you know other stuff going on, it's often best to simplify that fraction if you can. Whenever you want to do other things, it's best to, to do other things with a more simplified expression. It just makes life easier. Um, and so notice that, that this fraction here, uh, there's a common factor in the numerator and the denominator of x squared. In other words, I can divide out x squared from the top and the bottom, and I'd be left with an equivalent fraction. But this time, that fraction is, it's reduced, it's 3x cubed divided by 4, just 4. And then we still have to apply this cube. And, 
And applying a cube to a fraction just tells us that we need to cube the numerator and cube the denominator. Okay, well the numerator cubed is well, 3 cubed and, and multiplied with x cubed cubed because this is a product and a product raised to the power is, is the, takes each factor and raises it to that power. And so we get 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. x cubed cubed is, uh, that's x to the ninth. There's a few ways to think about that. You can think about it as x cubed times x cubed times x cubed, and you see that there's 9x's being multiplied. Another way to see it is that you've got three groups of three x's being multiplied. In other words, 3 times 3, 9 x's being multiplied. And then 4 cubed is 64. And so that's, that's the final answer there. Okay, well, so let's do one last one to, to wrap up this, this video, and, and we'll do more in the next one, but I just want to close this video out. So here we've got the equation 7 halves x minus 5 over 6 is equal to 1 third plus 3 over 4 x. And we want to solve this equation. And so I look at this and, and we've got all these fractions floating around and, and fraction arithmetic is, is not the, not always the friendliest uh, to work with. So let's get rid of these fractions be, by, by multiplying both sides of this equation. And, and this is a fair thing to do because this is an equation. Right, whenever we've got an equation, it's okay to, to multiply to the left as long as we multiply also to the right side of this, equal, this equality symbol. And so what number will, can we multiply to, to get rid of all this division that's happening from these denominators, that's, you know, making these fractions? Uh, well, if we multiply by 12, the number that's divisible by all of the denominators, uh, things will cancel out. Right? We'll have a 12 in each of the numerators, that's what happens when we multiply 12 to each of these fractions. Right, we can think of that as 12 over 1. And when we multiply a fraction with another fraction, like 7 halves times 12 over 1, well, we multiply the numerators. And then we multiply the denominators, but 2 times 1 isn't going to change. Okay, and so what's the cancellation that occurs here? Well, 12 divided by 2 is behind 6. Here we've got 2, 4, 3. The equation that's equivalent to our fraction equation above is, is 42x minus 10 is equal to 4 plus 9x. Okay, and so subtracting 9x from both sides, We get, what is this? This is 33x minus 10 is equal to 4. Adding 10 to both sides. Oops. This gives us 33x is equal to 14. And then lastly, dividing both sides by 33 gives us x is equal to 14 over 33. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.